me back because now he started. Ironically, actually, this game was one of the reasons I heard of King Gainer earlier on because while I was looking up Tomino stuff at around the time when Double and K were new, that was because I probably started exploring more in life and started learning more. So this is around the time that I actually started exploring more of his works, including works that involve people that involved him in my five star stories. Regardless, in this situation, King Gainer finally makes his debut in this game. Yeah, it be debuts here, and then also appears in the Z series. It hasn't appeared since. I kind of want it to appear again, because King Gainer is fun. Like, come on, it's a, it's a mecha that has power over weather. I mean, if you don't count ID on, King Gainer is probably Tamino's best mech ever made. Regardless, um... Let's start up this part because, yeah. So apparently, right now they're fixing mechs. You know, they're fixing up everybody's mech. But apparently, um, Mrs. Mech is, it takes a long time to service, which makes sense as the Regulus is an original. Whereas, what's called with Angelica's, the Celius was a mass production. Meanwhile, Koji wishes Mezinger was as easy to service as that since it took a pounding in the Fire Doctor Hell and has had a full dose of TLC since. Since. Yeah, even its Super Metal Alloy Z is approaching Aspiration Day and its power output is way off spec. Regardless, um, Mrs. Revius is. The Regulus is, of course, not a mass pro unit. It's instead based on a mobile weapon excavated from a certain ancient ruin. Several were in fact made and distributed to the armed forces, but Miss doesn't know who's responsible, which makes sense. Apparently Atrium, the people they're from, went through a period in its past where all the high-set stuff was steeled away, and notes that the mechanical lineages between those mech and the modern day ones are so close that any given designer is as like as not to discover that their problem area was solved two millennia ago. Apparently the ruins hold two kind of mecha. One serves as the basis for the Regulus and mechs like it, while the other was harder to analyze and so they made partial copies, which is where you get the Celius from. Regardless, the Atrium self-defense forces were apparently, even though they were good, they were kind of useless against a teleporting enemy. But yeah. Apparently, even though the self-defense forces were heavily staffed by these recreations given that the ancient pet tech proved to be superior to Atrian's modern-day stuff, everyone came out ahead in a sense, which is cool. So yeah, Mrs. at least makes sense. He understands why legacy mecha like Mezger Z are holding up their forces. Yeah, it's basically that part. Okay, apparently, um, their mecha apparently customized with power plants relative to their contemporaries, and neither of them had a chance to ask what the modifications were for before they heat a battle. Even a mostly perpetual motion machine is a very staggering concept, applying freedom and wasting fuel and a host of other pluses. Shizuka is gonna ask Sakon about it. Apparently. Since she's not even sure what to do with it. Regardless, they're about to go out and explore. So yeah, now they're all gonna go out and explore. Which makes sense as she's explore because you, you know, basically Daiku Mario did expect to, you know, at the least have its own little thing with fighting the Darius and everything else, but they didn't expect to randomly transport to another world, so, you know, they need to get food. Regardless, now Overman King Gainer's plot starts up in the game. So apparently he's explaining... Yeah, Mamadu's explaining everything, including how they created the London IMA, the whole... 
Yapon stuff, all that stuff. As well as that, um, what's it called? Yeah, La Naime in this world observes and supervises humanity with the ultimate goal of reviving the devastated climate, which is why they, yeah, plants and animals do need to remain in temperate zones. While, of course, in this world, mankind moved to tundras and deserts, clustered inside domes for hundreds of years until the present. It would be fascinating, but Gainer doesn't really care, so. Yeah, he's been gaming all night. Regardless, um. Apparently, studying is useless to Gainer, which makes sense because it kind of is useless to Gainer. He's a gamer. Gainer? Gamer? <laughs> so now they're talking about going out of the. What's it called? Going out of the domes to start up Exodus. Which makes sense. And Exodus is to, you know, get out of the place and find a new place, basically, in this world. Which is what the whole series was about, was them running, you know, while doing it. But yeah, apparently, from what Sarah said, um... It's the flouting of La Naime authority in the interest of living by one's own strength in the promised land. It is, in short, a battle to seize one's future, and the teacher wants all the students to do everything in their power to help bring their exodus to a successful conclusion. Regardless, he left, but apparently not everyone seems to buy into his message. That is funny, though. This is, remember, this is the early gainer before his, um, before his character development. He, because he hates the idea of Exodus. And that he's not along on this little joint because he was told to. But it does make sense. and Because remember, in series, one of the reasons Gainer originally hated the Exodus was because his, both his parents were killed by pro-Exodusers. You know, people that wanted an Exodus. They killed his parents. King Gainer is his username, which makes sense. But yeah, basically he's protecting everybody as King Gainer, so it makes sense. Because he pilots King Gainer. And this series is around the time when Gainer gets Brunhilda. Not Gainer, Gain. Fights Brunhilda, and then we get um, Brunhilda's stuff for Gain later on. Yeah, I guess Gainer, I forgot about that. This series doesn't really fully start originally at the beginning of King Gainer. It just starts literally around the time when they fight Brunhilda. And during this time, he's already got King Gainer, which makes sense since he's the one protecting them. So regardless, he does wonder, like, what they're gonna do, and apparently Sarah tells them that they'll just take up agriculture, growing rice and other staples, and Sarah is sure it will taste better than London. I made own art yeah, artificially grown fodder. And now we're onto this part right here. They're having a meeting, and now they found the city of Ma Ma Maya. Uh, Amir is at least honorary one of the original five of them, which makes sense. And now they're about to start fighting. So apparently they believe it looks just like um, ice and stuff. So they're going to probably, um, she was going to model it. Apparently he knows that it's Brunhilde that's doing this. Yeah. Brunhilde, that's where Gaines of Gachko got its arm from. 
Regardless, it's a wandering overman. Those same legends claim that it's the overman that Mir himself used in his very first exodus. And that it lost an arm in the process. That arm's, of course, now into the Gachko. And... Wow, it's his time to finally get all of Runehilda. Huh, so he's basically trying to get Runehilda for himself, which makes sense. Because remember, the later attack for the Gachko is Brunhilda itself. So now, at least Angelica's registering them in her sensors. Now they're going straight to it. So yeah, now they finally meet. Yeah, those aren't open in here. Alright, so he's gonna ask what kind of planet is this, and of course, this is where we get attacked by saying Rake and the next stuff. So yeah, they meet each other, do the usual stuff. So yeah, Saint Reagan's about to start attacking us. And then Brunhilde as well. Yep, it's still that old man. Okay, so now it's time for Yasawa to appear. Yasawa later on does... He does do his own little turn. Yeah. So now, before we can go back to um, the Exodus, we gotta take them down. Which shouldn't really be hard, except for Brunhilde in the middle. Ouch. So now they're starting to open fire. Perry doesn't know whether to be turned on or scared to their devotion to our job. So now he's got a we got to fight. The only reason Angelica is better right now. the halfway point of the series of King Gator, where more things happen. I like it on how the Gachko has such cool sprites with it though, look at it. It's literally Brunhild, look at it, Brunhild's arm, you can even see Gain right up there in the middle of his head. And of course the usual silhouette things. And of course King Gainer itself. I swear, this game really just hates you. I mean, it makes sense. King Gainer itself is about 8 meters tall, if I remember correctly, which makes sense. And it's got good movement to it, but the downside is, even though it's an S rank in space, which makes sense. I mean, those those rings that he generates when flying, yeah. And then, of course, in ground it's good, but at least in C it makes sense as to why it's not good, because nothing's good in the C except for, like, on the Death Scythe. But come on, in space? If it has a master over the air, it should be able to at least do good in space. Regardless, let's just start fighting and kill them all. She already sent a distress signal to the area, so they should be arriving soon.
kill all these guys real quick. So at least we're slaughtering them quickly. There's four Overmen over there. Now Overmen are interesting in that they have well their own form of new type sense, just over sense. Oh snap, also harm himself. Okay. So apparently, um, his only reason actually is here to, you know, well, basically, in series, Asuham's sister was in love with Gain. They did it, and so now Gain has a daughter with his sister. Unfortunately, Gain left, which made sense because Gain's too cool for that. And now Asuham's back trying to bring him back or kill him. Regardless, all this stupidity unfortunately is about to awaken Brunhilde itself. Okay, at least we now... Yeah, we gotta try and defeat Brunhilde as well. We're gonna defeat everything else first. And now we got our reinforcements finally. The Daiku Mario and the crew. So now we gotta just destroy him. Now we gotta destroy everything. downsides was I was kinda sad that Super Wild Wars L didn't really reveal or show anything with King Gainer. And come on look at how cool King Gainer is. These silhouette machines have their guns or that bomb. I do love, I, I want to cosplay as one of those things. As one of the Exodus people. Because that uniform is pretty cool. Might just commission it for an amazement or something. I don't know yet. First game gets his own theme. Then this is the reason let's see if it kills. If it kills, this is the reason why he's called the Black Southern Cross. Two, three, what? Oh snap. Three, four, five, six. The Black Southern Cross. When he hits you with all four of those, you just burn away. One of the cool things about game though was like oh snap over skill. Anyways, one of the cooler things about Gain though was 
Wow. Just look at him. He looks amazing. His character. Wow. Other than that, though, he also has his own theme. Most of the... At first, when I first watched King Gainer, I thought Gain would have been more of the protagonist. Sure, he's more... But he serves sure more as the mentor character, I guess. Which makes sense, since... King Gainer is kind of focused on Gainer himself. Because, you know, he's the main character. Regardless, um, it's the ending... His theme is the ending theme to the series. everything everybody's moved maybe he's thinking attack far ha yeah we can't attack back that ironically she joins later on which is kind of funny nice she baby I do like the idea that the original characters in the DS games are the main ones with, well, you know, that's just fine. Their cuttings, they actually move and everything, rather than it just be a, oh, dang, she made it. It's rather than it just be a basic uh, movement thing or just a slide like the others, no, she's got an actual attack. But yeah, all three of these guys have over me. Remember that Overmen are in their own right kind of broken. I mean, each one has varying abilities from illusions to mind reading to, in King Gamer's case, weather control. But I always thought it was pretty interesting about them. Because it shows that there's more to them than meets the eye, with, um. Also, they can defend. And that was 92%. There's some fire on them stuff. Okay, one more time with the Black Southern Cross. I'm sorry, that is such of a cool attack. Like... Literally. This is reason enough to always feel game whenever he appears. There's one, two, three, four, and you're done. So I call you the Black Sudden Cross with that dynamic kill. Three-way combo attack? Bruh. There's a three-way combo attack with these guys. Okay, three-way sounds wrong. There's a three-unit combo attack. That is pretty awesome. Honestly, I forgot about that. Oh snap, it's Sarah! 
them. Where's that bomb? Where's that bomb? There's the bombs. Okay, that's just cute. Darn! Ah, <laughs> they're cheery. One more time, cause well, let's weaken that one real quick. Let mine win. Eh, no, oh, no, oh. it let us. That was cute, though. Hey, the downside of this game though is you can't quicken animations. Like L, I think, was probably the first one of the handhelds to fully introduce attack animation. You know, the quickening of it. Basically, you press A on the screen and it quickens the animation. Ironically, this only costs 10 energy. Look at them cheering. That is so cute. They've net well they even um, animated it. This, should, this counts as abuse, doesn't it? Dear gosh, he's useless. Oh well. Over skin! I like how he has this attack, because remember, it wasn't until like mid-end series where Gainer learned to unlock two of the swords. Or, well, I guess, I don't know how you call it, sword. Not really sword, but... Right? Anyways, regardless. I do like the fact that they do ignore that, because... Once again, you, didn't ex you wouldn't expect that. Ah, that didn't work. But yeah, it wasn't until the end when he finally understood how to use over, you know, his oversense. Around the time of the... It was when he was basically beating down the over devil like crazy. That's where his final attack actually comes from. Well, one of them, where he's punching, punching, doing, doing everything. That was when he was fighting the over devil. I'll move them up, I guess. Because I do... Oh, dang. This thing can damage pretty well. This is Brunhilde. The more interesting thing about Brunhilde is, remember, with Oman King Gainer, all the mechs are literally under 10 meters, so they're of course going to be an S class because they're small. Brunhilde is an N class, which shows he's twice as big. Which, when you see when near the end of the series, when Gain uses him against um, 
the over devil and it kind of gets destroyed, you see that it's true. Because he's almost as tall as the over devil. To regenerate. Not that. Rider kick! Punch! Punch! Kick! It sounds like something you make in Parappa the Rapper. You know, the punch, punch, kick. Over skill. Ah, Suham. Regardless, Asamazi doesn't care about the Exodus, he just really wants to kill or get gain. Which makes sense, I mean, let's say a random guy impregnates your sister, then leaves. Be where you actually care about your sister a lot. Yeah. Downside of the Gachko is... Always a really downside. This doesn't, this doesn't feel right. So he's gone. <laughs> he's gone. Finished off with the Black Southern Cross. Regardless, Brunhilde basically is about to do its own little black hole thing. More like a teleportation so they can slumber again. That's all. He'll go and get it later, which he does because the Gachko is made from it. And it's armed, so he does. So yeah, now apparently we're going back to... Yeah, sorry. Yeah, we're back to the Yapon area. See, so yeah, apparently one of their overmen um, apparently no knocked over the mobile residential unit for Yapon ceiling, which right now the whole caravan's on. Let's call it's immobile. Now they gotta figure out a way to have to deal with that. King Ganner, yeah, King Ganner does not have enough power for that. So yeah, luckily Rose is there and they're gonna probably deal with it. But 
which would make sense. Alright, in this case, apparently in this world, um, the London IMA made a prohibition against exoduses because of the worries over the environment, which isn't fully repaired yet. Letting people out of their domes trash it anew is counter to their strategy and is hence illegal. All this stuff anyone who knows even a little Earth history should know set the course for the fact that Rosa, you know, she's from the Earth, so makes sense. So now they might be able to, what's called, get their help in fixing the residential unit. Meanwhile, apparently Yasawa, he's a total wreck of, yeah, he's a total wreck because he doesn't know, because um, she's nowhere to be found, which makes sense because a dad later on joins um, Gainer and the crew. And basically becomes like she does a complete heel turn. Like one of the few females that's actually physically attractive looking by their definitions in a Tomino Tomino work to do that. Alright, so now they gotta figure it out. And then here comes Asahem. Apparently he's a, he is um, joining the whole... Oh, here he is. He's apparently joining the um, Yapon case, thanks to London. Apparently, of course, as we know, Asahem does not care about any of that. He just wants, you know, to kill Gang. Or get him back for, you know, his sister. So, yeah. Without game, but he does make sense. If you manage to take game, because game's an Exodus specialist. If you manage to take out the specialist while there's a bunch of noobs, the noobs are bound to fail because there's no specialist to guide them. Which makes sense. So apparently he tells him to stay out of his way, which makes sense because you, you kind of gotta stay out of his way. He's psychotic. Does that make sense? Meanwhile, they've already had a, um, they made the harness and everything for the residential unit. And it's apparently a trivial test of the, um, Daikamari's power. So apparently the residential unit is, it's a dwelling construction of parts of its respected Dom Dom Domopolis? Essentially, it's a city on wheels, which is pretty cool. Apparently she asked as well what kind of thing the Dark Mario is, but the Dark Mario itself is not a ship from this earth, so yeah. So now that everybody's eating, while the commanders are doing that stuff, everybody's just basically eating, which makes sense because, you know, food. Regardless, um... Alright, so basically Go apparently notices that this food is Russian, but in this Earth, Russia does not exist, but even though it's Earth. So apparently in this world you never know. Regardless, it's a different it's a different earth altogether. So she apparently, that's actually kind of funny. He gets his girl to um, make, use their ingredients to try to make Japanese food, which tastes like Japanese food to them. The 
Regardless, Go's about to head back to um, what's called build base to report this. But yeah, it tastes like Japanese food. So apparently there's two different Earths going on in this situation, which would make sense because Super Raw Wars, and we later on get the Z games, as well as L. I think like, when you look at it from the later generations, I think Double, yeah, the 3DS Super Raw War games, Double is the only one where everything takes place on one Earth. K has multiple stuff and L has two Earths. Apparently, yeah, there's two words going on, and luckily there may be hope in getting the Daikumaru fixed up in Zonet. Which makes sense since... We're heading to Zonet next to repair the Daku Mario as well as the residential unit. So yeah, they already negotiated. Apparently, they're gonna they're gonna do it as well as what's called as well as some little issue that Saint Reagan kind of messed up there. And of course, the access people are gonna cry food. Apparently, a dead got lost in the process of the previous battle, so she's going into Yapon to try and kill game, but you know, she doesn't do that. Alright, so now it's time for some original time. Apparently, they get some time to themselves, marveling over the vitality of the people. Of this world that impels and tow entire cities all over the countryside. And unfortunately, Miss saw Angelica's dad die right in front of them. Apparently, she took it very well. And yeah, she steeled herself with this possibility the moment she joined the self defense forces. So, yeah, apparently, um, yeah, her dad's dead. Or so we think. Um, so yeah. Unfortunately, she's still crying though, which makes sense. I mean, when your own dad dies, yeah. Regardless, next part is finally the main reason I got into this game. Gun X Sword. Thank you all for watching. Until the next part, goodbye.